Hey, welcome everyone to the Knuckleball Experience Show. Uh, today, uh, we're going to have a special guest, Jared Fernandez. Jared, uh, born and raised in Utah and um, knuckleball pitcher. Pitched 14 years of professional baseball, uh, all the way up to the big leagues with multiple uh, organizations. So uh, let's uh, let's welcome to the show, Jared Fernandez. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate you, Jared, coming on the show. And um, uh, man, I, I like the hat there. You, uh, what is that? That's, um, is, is that, is, that's your uh, beard company. Yeah, this is my beard company, uh, J Fez Beard Co. Uh, we just started that this year. So it's been a lot of fun. Just, uh, me, my son, I've, I've been getting after it and starting a new business. It's been, been a lot of fun. Awesome. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, so Jared, you know, when I was in high school, messing around with pitch, Jared was actually uh, one of the guys I, I saw, you know, working up to the minor leagues and pitching in the big leagues. And um, anyway, fast forward a bunch of, a couple of years later here, and uh, anyway, we get to get to talk knuckleball. So it's a uh, it's a real treat. So um, anyway, so I'm gonna start show off how I usually do. And um, what was your Jared? What was your first experience with a knuckleball like? did your dad throw it to you did you see it on tv or uh, you know what i i always could throw it you know i remember watching charlie huff and uh, the negro brothers candy Adi back in the day um <clears throat> i i loved it you know I, I didn't understand it at first but i was like okay they're just taking spin off and i had it immediately so uh, but i hold mine completely different than what they did and didn't actually throw it exactly the way they did but that was my first experience just seeing the the, those guys play, you know, I used to slough school and go watch uh, the Braves play, you know, and then anytime they played the Cubs, those, those day games. So yeah, I was always watching baseball, always trying to learn. Um, so when did you, when did you start throwing it competitively in the game? Like obviously you were probably throwing on the sidelines and stuff. When was it? Yeah. I was, um, so I was at, threw it a couple times in college, maybe once in high school, but I used to throw pretty hard. Um, you know, not crazy. I was like 90, 91. I could get a couple more higher, but I stuck right around 90 through high school. And then I ended up going to Fresno state, uh, Fresno state. I actually broke it out uh, a little more. I actually had, um, I don't know if you remember Dennis Springer was a knuckleballer and he, his dad, I had just thrown a complete game. Uh, got the whack MVP beat BYU. And I probably threw my knuckleball like five times that game. He came down and said, hey, you should throw that knuckleball. I'm like, I don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> I just dominated this game. And but it was always fun to throw the knuckleball. But, yeah, it was really cool for Springer's dad to come over. I, I talked to Springer quite a bit while we were playing. Great guy and had a great knuckleball as well. So uh, Sparks, I mean, they're, they're so it's such a small community, but it was everyone had each other's back and wanted everybody to, to succeed. So that was really cool. Nice. So I guess, all right, so you first started throwing in, in college and then. Um... Yeah, not a ton. I just a, a few games here and there. And then I remember in the regional, um, it was at LSU and LSU was so dominant that year. Um, and they were hitting everything I threw. So I threw a lot more knuckleballs just trying to get them off my fastball and everything. So that was probably the first time I used it. I bet you I threw oh, maybe 20 in that game. And then. Later on in my career, I was probably, you know, 80, 90 percent knuckleball. So going from that, just trying to mix things up to now I'm a knuckleballer. Now I eat, that's your bread and butter. You got to stick with that. And can you can you talk about that when you what was when when did you make that transition to throwing it like 20 times in a game to 80, 80 percent, 80 plus? Percent? Yeah, I, I signed with the Red Sox as a regular pitcher. I went to short season A ball, uh, pitched really well. I had a three something ERA, three. I don't remember three, six, something like that. Uh, just kind of mid relief, throwing my regular stuff, fastball, slider, curveball change. Um, and they came to me and said, Hey, we're going to release you. And I said, wow. <laughs> I thought I did really well. You know, I said, now nah, you're dime a dozen. We can find you anywhere unless you have something extraordinary. So I wasn't ready to stop playing ball. I said, Hey, I have the best knuckleball in the world. And they're like, Oh, okay. Let's see it. Go get a, go get a catcher. So I went and got Joe DePastino. I don't remember if Joe, incredible catcher. Uh, through a bullpen and it had rained earlier so it was nice and humid so you could really get that knuckleball movement through my pen they loved it and said hey congratulations you got a job next year so 
fast forward to that spring training, Wakefield had got released from the Pirates and was speaking to our minor league pitching director and Wake still wanted to play. And Phil Negro and Joe Negro were coaching the Silver Bullets, the all-girls team at our uh, facility in Fort Myers, Florida. So they said, hey, you want to keep playing Wake? And he's like, absolutely, I want to keep playing. They're like, let's have you work with the Negroes. And we got a young kid, Jared Fernandez, we're going to make full-time knuckleballer. So they came and talked to me. So we want you to switch. I'm like, I have no interest on switching. You know, I worked on my fastball all off season. They're like, if you don't switch, you don't have a job. You're going to work with Wakefield and the Negroes every day. We got your own personal catcher, no PFPs, no nothing. Learn the knuckleball, learn how to throw strikes. So I was very fortunate in my knuckleball career because um, one, the Red Sox liked the knuckleball. Uh, Wakefield was there to help me and answer questions. The Negroes, like, when me first starting out is unheard of for a knuckleballer. So I was very, very fortunate to get, to get the hands on. Yeah. Yeah, you were. That's, that's awesome, man. Um, all right. Uh, you, you have a baseball nearby. I do. I you... Yeah. Always. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, can you show everybody, um, how you grip the ball and, you know, yeah. maybe how you so, started and maybe how you transitioned. If, that, if Yeah. So, so mine was super different. So, um, uh, if you ever watch Wakefield, Candy Audi, the Negroes, so Wakefield would hold the ball like this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but his fingernails would just dig right in there. And then you can imagine that at Fenway Park in April when it's cold. I mean, his, his fingers hurt. So if you don't have compression, as anybody golfs, you know, uh, very hard. So he would get here, hold it like that on both nails. And when he comes to a pitch, it would be a push. So that's how he would push it. You get here and do like a, a almost a high five to the catcher. Um, and just get that movement, you know, of, of nothing. So mine is way different. So what I did is um, I tucked that index finger under. So I don't know if you can see that. Okay. And then I put my middle finger bent that nail. So I, I'll just rotate there. So maybe you can see that really, really different grip. And then I had those three on the seams there. So when I threw mine, I didn't get here and do a push. I actually threw it and just like stopped my shoulder, you know, and just so I could get that release point. So it took a long time to learn how to do that. I could not throw it like Wakefield or Candiotti or any of those guys. Um, but they had such finesse, such touch to just get there and push it. I mean, it's a real timing game to get that no spin. But on mine, I couldn't do it. I had to invent my own way to hold it and throw it so the key is no spin you know they i guess you want well i know that you want about a quarter of a spin as it goes to home and just let that catch a seam uh the best way i can describe a knuckleball for people who don't know is if you've ever you know forrest gump they dropped a feather you don't know what way that feather is going to go because there's different air currents everywhere that's kind of how the knuckleball is you'll hit those different air currents as it goes or if you've ever been in the pool you're walking, there's like, ooh, there's a warm spot or there's a cold spot. Same thing in the air. There's different sections throughout that's going to move that baseball. So um, the warmer, the better was for me. People say, oh, you must want it windy. I didn't need the wind. I didn't like it. Uh, I didn't, it didn't help me with maybe movement, but it was hard to control if it was crazy, you know, but heat, humidity was very best for me. Yeah, something for the ball to grab into. No, no. Yeah. And, you know, this is a good point. I talked to somebody uh, earlier and there's many ways to skin a cat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, <laughs> and I, I, that's, I'm, I'm glad you're, you know, you showed the grip there because uh, yeah, there's many ways to do it. Like the key is kill and spin, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's key. You know, you got to find your own identity, you know what I mean? Like, Hey, that didn't work. Let's, let's figure out what works. And, and you did. Yeah. And, and that's key. Um, I don't think there's, yeah. So like people watching here, like take and leave what you want. You know, I think that's key. Don't follow everything this, you know, a guest does is yeah. take and leave what works for you. I think that's, that's something to remember here. Yeah. The, so. the biggest thing I always sound was, yes, you're throwing a knuckleball. There's a lot of things you got to do, you know, controlling the running game. You know, you're throwing slower to home. There's a lot of things you got to do. And you're, a lot of time people are thinking about your grip. Um, is my arm in the right slot? Where's my feet at? 
that's all great and grand when you're in the bullpen or practicing. But when it comes to the game, you have to compete against that other team, against that hitter. The second you start competing against your mechanics and how you're holding it and am I getting spin off? Am I doing that? Like you've lost the game. That's not the game. The game is to compete against the other player. So take care of business in the bullpen, all that. And once you got it, go to the game and compete against that guy. I always said, you know, if you're an arm wrestler, you don't go, oh, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my hand, I'm going to do this and put my shoulder. No, you've lost. <laughs> you have to beat that other guy. So yeah. uh, just that competition, get away from competing against yourself and compete against the hitters. I like that. I like that. Absolutely. All right. So, I mean, you kind of, you touched on it there. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about maybe your approach with pitching with the knuckleball, how it matured from when you first started to, you know, towards the end of your career? Like, like I know for me, example is like, you know, early on, you know, like, oh, I want to throw that nasty pitch. <laughs> it was missing yep. barrels. And, and, you know, I want to strike everyone out versus like yep. maybe for transitioning for me, like I was trying to miss bats. I want, I want, I want, I want pop-ups and ground outs. Um, yep. Anyway, so share share your experience yeah i was the same way when i first started i was throwing it as hard as i could um you know it was good knuckleball but sometimes it'd spin because i'd snap my wrist um you know it just and then as i mature and then still i was still used to being a regular pitcher so i'd bend my back you know my hand used to hit the ground when i'd throw and as i matured i was more standy uppy more consistent with the knuckleball changing speeds with the knuckleball and then it helped my fastball as a little surprise. When I was just throwing knuckleballs as hard as I could, and then I threw a fastball hard, they were so pleased that I would do that. But, you know, as I matured as a knuckleballer and matured as a pitcher, change in speeds and movement is where it was at. So I'd throw a slow knuckleball, and I could zip that fastball in. Uh, it was a little more, more of a surprise. And my goal was always to, um, not always, like you, I wanted to strike everybody out at first, but then it was uh, make a miss hit it. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted them to get themselves out. Um, and I would talk to hitters all the time. I mean, I would be, I, you know, I, not to say big names, but I talk Ken Griffey Jr. all the time, Nomar Garcia Parr all the time, uh, Barry Larkin all the time, uh, Bagwell. I just say, hey, how would you guys approach me? Like, what are you guys looking at? And the very good hitters like a Jeff Kent would say, my goal, because you'd think guys want to just pull it because it's coming slower. Worst thing in the world you can do to try to hit a knuckleball. Now, like Jeff Ken always said, is what he wanted to do is hit it right off my forehead. So his goal was to go right up the middle. If he happened to catch it a little early, perfect. You know, so that was his goal when he approached a knuckleballer. It just turned into stay back, wait for your pitch, hit it right up the middle. So, you know, that helped me a lot. What guys would look at, I'm like, do you like a curveball? Do you like a slider? They're like, if you throw a curveball and it's a mistake and it's knuckleball speed, I'm going to hit it. So it's better, it better be a good knuckleball and, or sorry, a good curveball and down. So um, just those hitters helped me a lot. That was really good of me to, you know, or good of them to come to me or have that conversation of what, what, what's the approach. Gotcha. Can you, can you, can you um, maybe expand on like, you know, the fastball? I mean, would you see guys like up at the box? I see it where they're just like, Okay. Would you, yeah. would you, would you throw an OO fastball? Oh, one buddy, let's go. Or yeah. How was your approach time, with fastball? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was still, still had that regular pitcher mentality. I don't, I didn't care if you hit it 900 feet, you know, I'll, I'll throw a fastball. I really, you know, not that you're a really aggressive mean knuckleballer. Cause I mean, at the end I was throwing my fastball, you know, 80, but when people would get super comfortable in there and, you know, bury their feet, no fear. I would have to come in, you know, just, it's just lack of respect. I don't want anybody hitting off me like that. I'm old school. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, when people dug in like that, I had no problem coming inside. If I hit them, that's fine. Now I have a double play in order. So uh, guys that got a little too comfortable used to upset me a little bit, or when they take those gigantic swings, um, even if they swung and miss, you know, it's like, I'd get mad <laughs> at that, but you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. Right? Baseball is fun. It's just a game. And, um, but I learned a lot throughout the year. So, you know, I, I experienced a lot of different hitters. Some could just hit it, you know, I would throw fantastic knuckleballs and some guys just crushed it. Other guys had, had no chance on it. So, um, you know, my approach, 
was take spin off the ball, throw strikes, let them miss hit it. Every throw that I can get a strike with, I'm hoping they miss hit it. So a lot of double play balls, a lot of pop-ups, you know, that, that was my goal to get guys, have them mess themselves up. I like that. So, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, you're not forcing it, you know, you're not like, Oh, I'm going to get them out. Like, uh, you know, when you, when I feel like you try too hard, things spit out of control. You just more of like a trusting approach, a trusting attitude. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, uh, again, I wasn't perfect, you know. <laughs> I knew what I had as a plan. Of course, yeah. you try and change some things here and there, but you now I had a pretty good plan and good people around me. I had great catchers that that knew when I got a little pitcheritis and wasn't too bright. I could have. I always had good catchers that could come say, "Hey, throw your best pitch, take spin off the ball," and they'd tell me, "Hey, it's rotating a little bit." You know, okay, perfect, thanks. Because I don't, I don't want to look at the ball when I'm throwing it. I want to know that I can throw a good knuckleball. So when I would throw it, you know, I got to, I got to play defense now. So uh, I had great catchers throughout that really helped me out. And communication's key. Yeah. Yeah. Good feedback. A catcher that that's receptive, that wants you to throw it, you know, bases loaded three, two, you want a catcher yeah. like that. Not somebody like, Oh, come on, Jared, just, just throw yeah. it on fastball. <laughs> yeah. You don't want that. That's yep. key. A good relationship. Awesome. All right. Um, and we could bounce around or whatever. The The next question is, uh, what was your, what did your off season and in season throwing program look like when you're knuckleballing? Were you long toss knuckleball, throwing it short, throwing against the wall, only bound work? What, what did that look like? Uh, how'd you for, prepare? For, for me, I played winter baseball almost every year because I wanted more innings. I wanted to pitch more. I wanted to get more consistent pitching. So I didn't have a lot of those complete off seasons where I got to just throw, work on speed, work on strength. Uh, But when I did, long toss was key to get velocity. Um, Played a lot of long toss and how you play long toss too. So, you know, if any, if any kids out there want velocity, they want to increase velocity, super, super easy. So you take that throw that you did from center field. I mean, you get up, you launch it. It's 200 foot throw. Now you got to bring that to 60 feet, six inches. So you don't throw to the catcher's glove. You throw through the catcher's glove. You know, I tell kids that I want you to throw this ball through that catcher's glove, through your catcher, the umpire, the backstop, the nacho girl. Like it doesn't stop at the, at the catcher's mitt. And you'll see kids if you ever do lessons, you know, you know, don't. Yeah, that's great. You're throwing strikes, but we don't want, that's not the finish line. The finish line is 200 feet past that catcher. So once the kids get that mentality is to bring it and let it eat and throw through everything, it'll pick them up four miles an hour like that. It's just getting that in their head that that's not the target. The target's through everybody. So um, when I wanted to work on velocity, uh, that that's what it was, was long toss. And again, it wasn't two home plate or two second base. It was through them. Um, You ever see good cutoffs? That's how they're going. They're not to the cutoff guys. So that was huge for me in my off-season program. Uh, really weird for me as a pitcher. Uh, a lot of pitchers don't bench press because you can get impingement in your shoulders. Uh, but me as a knuckleballer, that was my motion, you know. So I did a ton of bench press. And, um, you know, I let my trainers know that this, this helps me stay more consistent, more in a zone with my shoulder, especially when I'm stopped. I absorb everything in my shoulder. Um, again, like you said, you know, you got to, mold it to yourself type thing, you know, and that's what helped me. was a lot of bench press. Um, back then it was Job exercises. I don't know if you remember that. So it was the little, you know, three, five pound weights or the tennis ball cans. I did a lot of that, a lot of the tubing. Um, but, and then another huge thing for me was, uh, it's super easy. A lot of times for guys to go do, you know, 90 feet and throw a knuckleball, 60 feet, throw a knuckleball, you know, off on the sideline for the game or whatever. But then you elevate and get on a mound, it's a different story. So I always wanted to throw my knuckleball off the mound. Even if I had a chance to play catch, just that angle can really do something different to your knuckleball. It can create spin if you're always used to flat ground and now you have that angle. So if you're having problems taking off spin on your knuckleball, I recommend getting on the mound. And remember, high five that catcher. Um, When you play long toss, of course, you have to snap your wrist. And now when you're going to go throw the knuckleball, your 
first couple are going to be snappy. You got to get back to that stiff wrist, high five the catcher. So if you're, I don't know why I might not go ball spinning. I know exactly why you're throwing like this, tighten up that wrist and, and it'll stop spinning. And, you know, one thing I did is I would, I would start at like 10 feet, Jared, after throwing fastballs. And I, yeah. I, I kind of did this on my own. And then that's what Phil recommended. That's what he did. He'd start yeah. at 10 feet with a catcher down is I'd go t- 10 feet easy after my arm was yeah. loose and then work back. Because like you yeah. said, get super snappy, yeah. just start easy. And then I don't know. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And was- again, everyone's different. Some people may just have, a, this is just for me, if I played long toss, I was snappy. And then I would throw this knuckleball, which isn't good. So um, that's what worked for me. And then again, I had uh, so many catchers that were good, like, Hey, it's spinning a little bit. Okay. Let's tighten my wrist up. We'll get it. We'll get it figured out. And if you want to continue on playing pro ball, I mean, the difference in high school knuckleball, big league base or knuckleball is you got to fix it in one pitch. Like we don't have time for you to fix it in three walks. So, you know, when you get to that point is what's wrong with my knuckleball right here, I'm going to fix it this pitch. Boom. Got it. That that's what helps you advance and be a better knuckleballer. Yeah. Uh, being, yeah. Having, having those adjustments, easy, identify quickly, adjust. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, it, you know, you kind of touched on a little bit, but um, how did your mechanics change from when, you know, you first th- started throwing it to, um, you know, you talked about the chest thing to, you yeah. know, towards the end of your career? What were some checkpoints and adjustments you made through your career? Um, so I used to be in the full – all the time, you know, not all the time until guys got on base, but then I switched to the stretch just so I would be more consistent. So I stayed in the stretch all the time. Uh, again, that knuckleball is fickle. <laughs> you got to stay consistent. So that helped me just staying in, in the stretch the whole time and then straightening my back. Like I said, I used to just bend and twist and put everything I could into it. Just, I needed to quiet it down. So second I did that, my knuckleball was more consistent and just kind of funneled in uh, for a strike more. So that that's mostly my change. And then once I became a knuckleballer and was more aware of the running game, you know, that's when I had to, okay, I'm, I got to really work on my pickoffs. I got to really work on my pitch outs. I got to work on my, you know, people are going to try and bunt people miss hit and it's going to be in front of me. So I had to all of a sudden where I never worried about that stuff. So I mean, of course I could always do a pickoff or a pitch out. But now I was doing it a lot. And, you know, we're trying to pick up on, you know, when are guys going to still? And that's how you win games. You keep guys off second base, you know. Guy on second yeah. base, there's a single, he scores, they miss the cutoff, now he's on second again. So that's how you win games, keep guys off second base. Yeah. Can can you uh, – I know for me, and I don't know what you recommend, like a lot of people take it for granted, like whole, changing your looks, uh, your pickoff, Early on in my career, and I don't know, I would take it for granted. I wouldn't work on it. I'd, I'd, I'd just show up to the park and and do it in the game, and then, you know, I got called out. And that's something I started in my bullpens is I'd come set one with thousand throw, come set one with thousand, two with thousand, three with thousand. Is that something you would work on uh, in practice? And then bring yep. it to the game, or you would just show up to the game and, and implement no, that? No, all the time. So um, I remember – uh, my wife would videotape me in the off season because I'm like something, something isn't right. Uh, I actually got caught um, a few times where I would, um, when I was going home, I would be close together. And when I pick off, I was in or vice versa. I don't remember, but um, I didn't know it. And people started stealing on me. I'm like, there's no way I'm under a one, three to home plate, you know, even on a fastball, but they're still still and they're getting something. And then somebody had got traded to our team and they said, Hey, you're tipping it. You're this versus this. So I got my wife, we got the camera, went out to a park (laughs) and I'm, I'm like, video me. And so she was like, yep, you're going home. Oh, wait, you're picking up. I'm like, no way. My wife is picking up this. She could still off me. So yeah, the second I fixed that now guys were messed up because they're like, Oh, okay. He's going home pick. So I worked on that a ton. So Um, but yeah, just those little things, again, you want to stay consistent. You want to look the same all the time, even when you're throwing a fastball versus your knuckleball, you want to look the same. So 
very easy to pick up as, as a hitter if guys are going to change it. I mean, of course, they would love a fastball down the middle versus a knuckleball. So, so it sounds to me like you, you'd you recommend guys that maybe learn this pitch, like do some video. Everyone's got a cell phone. Yeah. Hey, we throw the bullpen, get the video out there. Hey, am I doing something different? Fastball, <laughs> yeah. knuckleball? I think that's key. I mean, yep. you yeah. silly yeah, you not do to. You definitely got to do your homework. You know, you want to, I mean, me, I wanted to be the best knuckleballer I possibly could be. So how am I going to get there? So I got to go, you know, go throw more innings in the off season. I got to throw outside. I got to watch other pitchers. I got to watch hitters. I mean, if that's what you want to do, um, but I just loved it. I mean, I love baseball. I wanted to learn all the time um, and not just even pitching or knuckleballs. I wanted to learn the whole entire game. So I was always picking everybody's brain. Uh, about every aspect of the game so but as far as the knuckleball you know at first when I first started I was not into it didn't want to do it and then I fell madly in love with it so uh, like I said just a great group of guys that have all been knuckleballers everybody's been so nice to me and helping me throughout my career of trying to get better and things they experienced and you know hopefully I can pass that on to the next generation of knuckleballers and hopefully I can help out any way I can yeah Absolutely. I'm, I'm with you, Jared. That's awesome. Um, can you, another thing, you know, I, I kind of want to share with ki- people listening is like, there's a learning curve. Some, some have a steeper learning curve. Some people pick it up real fast. Can, mm-hmm. um, so I like to, you know, can you, can you share about maybe your, your tough, toughest or worst outing, you know, throwing an up ball and then maybe your best outing where you were shoving unhittable. Yeah, I <laughs> I try and forget those bad ones, but it's hard to. So um, my worst game ever was in the big leagues. Um, I didn't know I was starting. Um, I, I think our starter got hurt or something. So I had already done my lifts and all that, but no excuse at all. Um, but it was in St. Louis. It was in April, like the first week of the season. It was like 26, 28 degrees, which is not ideal for knuckleballs. Um, But I went, I don't even know if I got an out. I think I went like no outs, six earned runs. And only, I think I only walked like two people and no home runs. Like, you know how hard that is to give up six and no home runs? (laughs) Like you think somebody would destroy it at somebody, you know? So yeah, that was my worst game. And I was like, I did everything fine. I went back, put the videotape out of the game. My knuckleball was perfect. Like, zero spin my mechanics were great but it just didn't move so it was like them you know them hitting 60 mile an hour fastballs so uh I was so devastated about it but then once I looked at it there's nothing else I could have done my knuckleball was perfect um you know if it was warm weather it would have been a great game so (laughs) that that's the worst one I I think I've had uh you know I'm, I'm always trying to stay positive I've had a lot of great games um uh there was a stretch there was in triple a in nashville so what i always did and i always thought that it was important as a knuckleballer so i would start and the next day i would say i'm available in the bullpen so even though my arm may be killing me my back it didn't matter i thought as a knuckleballer that was kind of my job was to those bad games save the pen and you know and that i think that was what helped me in the major leagues is say they had a rough series they'd call me up and i would go and help eat up some innings, save that bullpen for their next series. Uh, And I I was kind of that insurance policy. So, you know, I'd go up for three weeks, go down a week, go back up for three weeks. And that was fine. That was my role. So I always thought that was important as a knuckleballer to make yourself available to keep throwing. Um, But I remember in Nashville, I threw like two, this is like in a month, I threw two complete game shutouts, uh, two complete game one run games, and then in the bullpen, I threw like eight innings and gave up like one run. So my numbers were off the charts that month, but it was just making myself available and staying healthy and keep going. And, um, but it was, it was kind of funny. So I had that month, they call you in the office, you know, it's like, yes, I'm going back to the big leagues. Called me in the office. And they said, Hey, so we got some younger kids coming up. We're going to move you to the bullpen. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I just threw four complete games with two earned runs you know like all right so yeah that was that was rough but uh oh, those were great games just and it, you know nashville's so warm and humid on those days it was perfect knuckleball weather so 
No, that was really fun. I actually got to um, pitch against R.A. Dickey in one of those AAA games. Uh, R.A. Dickey, Cy Young Award winner, knuckleballer. Uh, that guy was fantastic. Great knuckleball, but he threw hard. I mean, he threw low 90s. We'd come with a devastating knuckleball and then bam, fastball. Like he he had everything going for him. So, um, but yeah, I got to got to pitch against him. That was the first time in quite a while, knuckleball versus knuckleballer. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to back up there. It's something uh, I think it's important to realize, like when you had your rough outing, you yeah. look back and you were, you were all about process. All right. We got these numbers. That's great and all numbers do this, right, Jared. Yeah. But you were focused on your process. Was it a good pitch? How were my mechanics? You know, you, you went through your check. You should, you're like, all right, checklist is good. Hey, yeah. that's old news. Keep doing that. It, is that accurate? Yeah, and I was, I think I approached the game a little bit different because um, I didn't really care about ERA. I didn't really care about my strikeouts to walks. Of course, I don't want to walk a lot of guys, but I wanted to win. Am I helping my team win? Because I think that's what it's about. I don't care if we win nine to eight. You know, I had a bad game. I don't care if my ERA is 12. I don't care. I want to win the league. I mean, that that was my goal all the time. So yeah, I wanted to be better. I didn't want to hinder my team. I wanted to better my team. But I mean, you've seen some of the, those games where it was 22 to 20, you know what I mean? It <laughs> just, oh, did you win? You know, yeah. if you're going to go yeah. through all that, everybody's going to give up runs. Everybody's going to give up home runs. And uh, it didn't matter to me that much. It was just, I wanted to win and didn't, didn't want to hurt my team. So, uh, you know, that bad outing devastated me for a little bit or not devastated me. I just, What do you want me to do? So I think if you, as a knuckleball pitcher, say I was throwing 95 miles an hour that day and gave up six runs. That's okay, Jared. You're going to, you're going to go again. You throw 95, you know, but as a knuckleballer, I think your window of opportunity is a little, little smaller. You know, if you throw that a bad game like that, people are going, Ooh, I don't, I don't know if he's got it. Why would we have him here when that guy's throwing 95? So you got to have, which I was lucky to have. I had managers that believed in the knuckleball. Uh, general managers that believed in knuckleball and believed in 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 me and my skills. So, um, like I say, I was very very fortunate in my career that people people wanted me to succeed. So, you know, a lot of games I didn't do well. A lot of games I did do well. But I had people in my corner, which really helped me out. Yeah, that's yeah. And um, kind of add to that, like I don't know if you agree. I feel like uh, you have to you got to respect the pitch. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to be respected, you better be working hard. You better be working on your game. You better be serious about it. Because, like you said, we have a smaller margin. So, if you're over there goofing off on your phone while everyone's getting to work and coach is going to yeah. be like, ah, yeah. sorry, dude. Like, versus a guy yeah. that is putting to work, asking questions, actively learning. And if he has, you know, it gives you maybe a little bit margin. Like, hey, he's putting to work. Did you see his last bullpen? Like, He's going to figure it out. I feel that's yeah, that, important. That helped me. Um, and I think that was the thing. Like some guys would get called up and then get sent down. They're furious that they got sent down. And, you know, sometimes they did nothing to the, why they should have been sent down. Yeah. But I never complained about it. I was just like, hey, yeah. get me back up here a sec, you know, as soon as you can. So I was never a problem. I never yeah. complained. You know, I was, of course, yep. I'm bummed yep. when you get sent down, but they got me right back up there. So. I think that having a different attitude of like, no, I belong here. Da, 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 da. I mean, there's a lot of baseball players and they can fill that 25 man roster with a lot of people. So you, you never wanted to be a problem. You know, um, I had Don Gullett, who was huge. I don't know if you remember Don is left-handed pitcher. He's on the old RBI baseball. He was my pitching coach um, with the Cincinnati Reds. And I had made a mistake. I threw a bullpen. He wasn't saying anything. Um, I turned around and said, Hey, does that look okay? And he, he I don't want to say he chewed me up, chewed my butt out, but he was like, Do you really need a pat on the back? Like, how is how is my knuckleball? How's my bullpen? He goes, You know it was good. I was like, Well, you're just quiet. And he goes, That's what you need to do. You need to seize this pitch. This is yours. Grab hold of it and you take off with your career. He goes, You don't need people telling you it's good or bad or giving you advice. You're in the major leagues. So the second you can take hold of your career and this is my pitch you're going to be on your way Jared that was the best advice I ever had so right then I was like yeah well I know it's good but 
I don't need a pat on the back. I don't need approval from anybody, you know? So, so cool to come from him, super major leaguer, you know, I used to watch and gave me that advice and it was the best thing I could ever hear. So that really helped me out. And it was pretty early on in my career, you know, it was after the Red Sox, it was with the Reds. So it, it was just cool that he said that. I was really thankful that, you know, to put me in my place a little bit, but it helped me yeah. grow up a lot. So, yeah. Yeah, man. I, it, yeah, it's part of the maturity thing. Like, I know for me, like in high school, I was like, ah, is it good? I don't know. I don't know anyone coached me, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. you know, I got to the <laughs> point, you know, when I, you know, I was fortunate enough to work with, with Necro and, and he told me, I mean, that's, that's, that's a big league knuckleball. I mean, from then on, like my whole mindset changed. That was, you know, I was not everyone's going to have that opportunity, but yeah, my whole mindset changed. And then, you know, people are like, oh, knuckleball. Like, I, I mean, I didn't care. And, but, you know, I was professional. I respect, you know, you got to respect everyone and, 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 and stay in your path. And that's important. So, heck yeah. All right. Um, I guess, you know, kind of close up here. Uh, so what, what's some advice you would give to somebody that's, you know, just general advice you give to somebody like that wants to start throwing the pitch competitively. Yeah. I think that, um, say say that again. I'm sorry. Maybe like, I don't know, two, three things or like good advice, maybe a roadmap for them. Yeah. I think, I think as a knuckleballer, just, um, see if you can do it, see if you can take that spin off the ball. And like I said, you know, uh, this was Wakefield's grip. I, if I, with the two, I want to say Candy Audi was with three. Mine was a finger under with another finger curled. So yeah. whatever works for you to take spin off the ball. Um, and it's fun. <laughs> you know, I know uh, playing yeah. wiffle ball outside, that was always fun to throw that knuckle ball. So it's the same thing when you're getting major league hitters out, taking spin off the ball, there's not nothing more fun. But yeah, just try it. See if you can do it. See if somebody's willing to play catch. You know, you, you, you don't know if you can't succeed or can succeed if you don't try. So um, that's the biggest thing I would, I would see, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, I, I don't recommend throwing curveballs at any early age or sliders or anything like that, but uh, unless it's done proper, um, but the knuckleball, you're going to be fine holding it. It's not going to hurt, hurt your, your child's arm or shoulder or anything like that. It's just taking spin off the ball. It's just a different approach. So you know, you're basically doing the same as your fastball throw. It's the grip. I mean, just like a changeup, uh, you know, you hold it different way. You're not ranking the wrist on a curveball or nothing. They're holding it different and throwing their fastball. So if there's parents ever concerned um, that a knuckleball may hurt their their arm, it won't. It's just a, a different grip. So um, get that fear out of the parents <laughs> yeah. about their kid's arm. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just it's just a fun approach. Try it. Um, from there, if you can throw it on the sideline playing catch with your buddy, your dad, whoever, uh, now try and do it into your bullpen. You know, when you're playing catch, catch your equipment, see if you can throw strikes with it. Um, base yourself like, okay, I threw 10 pitches. How many were good knuckleballs? Oh, I'm at three. Talk to your catcher. Just kind of get that. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to get to four, my next bullpen. So it's not going to be a, I'm ready for the big leagues. Look at this knuckleball. It's Take your time, progress, learn, mature with it. So just take your time, you know, in baseball. So um, that, that that's basically all I would say. And then from that bullpen, now go compete with it. You did the work on the side, did the work in the bullpen. Now go and compete against hitters with that knuckleball. And they'll tell you if it's good. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll let you know real quick and yeah. um, don't give up on it. That's the other thing. If that's your bread and butter and you're throwing knuckleballs, you're getting hit. Don't go, ah, oh, I forget it. Put that in my back pocket. I'll stick with fastballs. No, nope. you have to live and die with it if you want to be a knuckleballer. So plenty of times knuckleballers, if you've seen on TV, uh, you know, Wakefield got hit, I got hit, but we kept throwing knuckleballs. So that's your bread and butter. If you believe in it, that's why you're there. So uh, just believe in that pitch. That's that's about, about it. Um, I'm trying to think, like, where else to go? So yeah, I, I always thought, in my head that as a knuckleballer, I made it to the big leagues, you know, was successful, but I always, and it's maybe just my makeup. Like I think I could have thrown left-handed and got people out. I, I would compete against anybody. Of course I can't <laughs> throw yeah. left-handed, but 
in my head, I always thought I can beat everybody at everything. Not true, but maybe I was just too dumb not to realize that yeah. you almost have to have that mentality of my knuckleball's good. I'm going to win. You're not going to hit it. Da, da, da. And that's half the battle. If you believe in yourself, you're going to be successful. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's great. Um, one other thing, I, you know, I kind of want to do, and I talked about earlier, you know, Phil, you know, you're, you're fortunate enough to work with Phil and, and his brother, yeah. Joe, and, you know, they they passed away. And um, yeah. can you, you know, maybe pass your legacy and what are maybe one or two things that when you worked with him that, that, that maybe stuck out to you that they taught you? It was competitiveness. That, that was Phil and Joe's MO. They competed. And, uh, you know, even Phil uh, had a couple games where he's like, I'm not throwing knuckleballs today. I'm going to show you guys. I'll beat him with my regular stuff. Like, Whoa, you know, <laughs> with the Braves. So, and he yeah. did it. So I think that confidence in yourself is huge as a baseball player. Like I will get it done no matter what. And, you know, that, and, you know, from my whole baseball career, that's the people I surround myself with now. You know, I don't like the negative people like, ah, I don't know. Da, 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 da. So I surround myself with positive people that I know, you know, they're not cocky. They're just confident and they'll get the job done. You want to, you want to surround yourself with those, those people. Like I, I just love teams. I love the camaraderie with my teammates uh, and love those guys that just had that, that confidence, you know? So um, it's, it's, there, there's a gravity about it that you want to be around. So that was what Phil and Joe were all about is being competitive, throw that knuckleball, throw it for strike, throw it with conviction. You know, I don't care if you got to slow it up, speed it up, change speeds, throw it with conviction and you, you'll be successful. So I, and you know, I watch these guys on TV. It's my first spring training and I'm just eating up everything. So, and then Wakefield would come in and me and Wake were throwing partners. We'd throw before we threw our bullpens and, you know, talking to him about NLCS with the, with the pirates and his experience. He used to be a hitter, you know, yeah. and then they had a good knuckleball. So uh, just, just all that, just um, soaking up as much as I possibly could uh, from those guys. But, Overall, it was competitiveness is what those guys were all about. So that that's mostly what I got about. You know, I was thinking, boom, here's my fastball back as a regular pitcher. And then they want me to convert to a knuckleball. I'm like, knuckleball. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I didn't think it was as fun. But then as yeah. I started doing it, it was like knuckleball strike three. You know, and I'm like, yeah, this is actually pretty fun, you know, to get somebody yeah. out on a 55 mile an hour knuckleball was was a lot of fun. So uh, yeah. yeah, it took a, a mind switch, but those guys were am, amazing and helped me with my career. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's awesome, Jared. Well, is there is there anything that we didn't cover that you, you just really want to share? Or um, that's, that was a lot. That was a good bit. Yeah. No, just, um, you know, I, I just, uh, I know baseball's tough right now. I mean, I, I wouldn't have even been able to play with all the, the travel leagues and all that, I wouldn't have been able to afford it. My folks, you know, there's no way. So, um, you know, if you want to play baseball, I, th I threw a ball against the wall. I, I played catch with my friends. I played in the, the park with my friends. Any way you can get better, um, you just got to keep playing. You know, your practice time, okay, we guys, we got practice five to seven. Well, if that's all you do, you're going to be just the same as everybody else. It's the extra credit time when you go on your own and you do your exercises, you do more throwing. So if you want to surpass everybody, uh, it's not just practice time. You, you have to take it up on yourself to, you know, hit off the tee more, you know, on your own, play catch more. So uh, I think that's how people get better and better is to go play more, get more innings, play catch. It's the, it's the little extras that's going to make you above the rest. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. All right, Jared, man. Uh, I really appreciate your time. It's been a lot of fun. And if, if there's, you know, you're out in Utah, right? Yep. Yeah. If, the, if there's a kid, you know, in the area, and he's, you know, he really wants to learn to pitch. I mean, can they reach out to you? Of course. Yeah. I'm available, you know, not just in Utah. Anybody has questions for me, hit me up anytime. You just shoot me an email. I'm at jfezbeardco.com. So J F E Z. B-E-A-R-D-C-O dot com. 
shoot me an email. I'll happy to answer anybody questions. I'm on Facebook as well, uh, yeah. Instagram. Shoot me a message. Happy to answer any questions anybody has. Yeah. All right, Jay. I appreciate it, man. Um, it's great chatting with you. And uh, yeah, we'll stay in touch. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir.